Hi, I'm Wei Zhu. I'm a correspondent for CNA based in Hong Kong. And this, this is Elon. Oh, oh yeah, 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 later, 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 baby, later. Okay. Elon is an eight months old Japanese Shiba Inu, and he's my lockdown puppy. There we go. I got Elon during the third wave of COVID last year in Hong Kong and applied to make him an internet influencer. Stop chewing, honey, and that's not for you to chew. Ah! You're supposed to look pretty in it. Well, let's just say his interest in the matter is rather limited. Elon. Elon. Elon, come to mom. Yes. I didn't have a dog when I was little, so Elon is my first ever fur baby. When he first came home, I had to do a crash course. Do you know you have to cut their fingernails? I had no idea. And because of all these dog-related searches I was doing, my social media feed was just filled with pet-related content. That was when I came across this mysterious story of dead dogs washed up on the beaches of Hong Kong. As a dog parent, I was absolutely horrified. And as a journalist, I knew I had to find out what was going on. This is the beach where the bodies of the dogs were found. But when I started looking into the story, I realized it wasn't a one-off incident. The day before the llama discovery, a similar cage washed up on the south side of Hong Kong Island, inside carcasses of three dogs a few weeks later, another cage was found in Lantau, containing one dog and two cats. When I realized that this was happening actually quite frequently, I got quite upset. You know, was this the work of a psychopath or what was it? So I reached out to the local police to find out. We how did some of them end up washing up ashore all over the place? You see, smugglers have begun to realize if they bring pets from China and sell them in Hong Kong, it can be quite lucrative. And the best way to do this is by boat. And because Hong Kong is surrounded by water, it's not that difficult to surpass authorities. But if they do get caught, they would dump the cargo. So in this case, these poor little animals. At this point, I just really wanted to meet someone who's selling smuggled pets to understand how big an incentive there has to be for them to actually do this. I found a suspect online who was offering cats for quote unquote adoption. That's what they usually say if they don't have a license to sell. And we arranged to meet him. The meeting place was really far. We drove for about an hour from downtown. This is so close to mainland China already. And we were instructed to park in front of a village public toilet. I know, nothing dodgy about that. The area was quiet and remote. People outside Hong Kong often don't know these places exist in Hong Kong, but they do. And village people, how do I put this? Village people are different from Hong Kong city people. They're organized into clans, and some of these clans have rumored triad links. Okay, you wear what color? I wear Okay, oh, I see, I see. So when I was told to go into a room with him by myself, I thought, eh, that does not sound very smart. So one of our crew members offered to go in with me, so we pretended to be a couple. And we couldn't bring the camera inside, so I wore a clip on mic just to get the audio. The problem with that is this, and then you really have to get him to say something incriminating. Once we went inside, it was a very small, dirty room with dozens of kittens just roaming around. They looked extremely fragile. I held one in my hand and it hurt my heart. But none of that seemed to bother this person at all. He immediately started talking about price. <laughs> so clearly he wasn't really offering the cats for adoption. When we left the room, 
I felt really down because I had no idea what these little animals had gone through and also how many of them would actually eventually survive. As I continue to investigate, I realize the pandemic presented yet another opportunity for smugglers. And that's because a lot of overseas Chinese people had to return to China in a rush and couldn't bring their pets along. So then they reached out to pet immigration agents to arrange the return of their pets via Hong Kong. But a lot of these animals, once they reach Hong Kong, they vanished mysteriously. 我哋估計咧，就因為疫情嘅影響啦，令到嗰啲主人咧冇辦法從一個合法途徑將啲貓狗運返內地啦，所以佢哋就委託咗啲中介，咁嗰啲人咧就唔理嗰啲貓狗嘅安全啦。I found a guy online. His name is Jason. He says his cat was lost here in Hong Kong on route from Australia back to Shanghai. 我澳洲回国的话，只有两家航空是可以允许猫猫当做随身物品带上去的，一家是大航航空，然后一家是亚航。但是当时是因为疫情的情况下，这两家是没有在运营的，所以就没有，我就去找了宠物中介。就是当时猫猫到香港那一天，然后他就拍了一个小段视频，然后我猫叫 Rainy 嘛。就在那个笼子里面，就是畏畏缩缩的在那，就看起来很疲惫嘛，肯定他也很担心受怕，然后我就特别心疼。我心想说，对啊，反正没多久就会到家，我肯定更加好好补偿他，照顾他嘛。在八月二十四号，可能是那个李先生给我打了一通电话，他说你的猫因为司机去接的路上，然后那个司机失踪了。It was really difficult because he's a grown man, and halfway through the interview, he really started to choke up. And I understand it. You know, I've only had Elon for four months, and I can't imagine living without him in my life. In the end, I realized that the issue is much bigger than just cats and dogs. A lot of animals, exotic animals and endangered animals, even are trafficked through Hong Kong and offered for sale. So, as a result, someone could lose a pet, like Jason did. Now, if you want to follow my investigation, really do check out this full episode of Undercover Asia, where it's my pet to Hong Kong. But also look at the other episodes in a series. We've investigated a wide range of issues, including the suicide pandemic in Thailand, domestic abuse in China, and the plight facing Philippines healthcare workers.